of all the plays that we talked about that were disastrous for the offense last year. Yep. The one that I think I've referenced most is throwing it backwards to Latavius Murray. But there was also another throw backwards fumble that the Vikings didn't realize was a fumble right away. There were pick sixes. There were fumbles returned for touchdown. All of those we talked about all the time ad nauseum. And the pick six against the New Orleans Saints was another one that we discussed uh, endlessly. Mm -hmm. But that play right there might have been the worst play of the season. And the one that swung the season the wrong way is when Kirk Cousins targeted Laquan Treadwell on a fourth down when he could have thrown it underneath to someone open for an easy first down and instead went into Marshawn Lattimore's coverage against Laquan Treadwell yep. on fourth down. And it went incomplete, gave Drew Brees the ball. They went down and scored. And that game was over from that point. And I remember looking at the win probabilities that that play right there swung the game something like 40% win probability swing from being about a 50 50 split at that point to Mike Zimmer panicking to go for it on fourth down. Yep. And then the quarterback targeting the worst wide receiver, maybe in the NFL. All last right. Year. But I got a very fair question for you. That certainly does not absolve Kirk of blame here, but it does spread the uh, guilt out a bit. And that's this. If you are the Vikings, if you are Zimmer, if you are Spielman, if you're anyone who has any power with that team, you got your lesson on Treadwell and what Cousins was going to do with Treadwell in week two at Green Bay, and we both saw it. We were both there for that. He threw him a touchdown pass, the one and only touchdown of Treadwell's uh, career receiving at this point, but he also threw him a pass, I believe, in the extra session that Laquan Treadwell uh, futilely tipped, basically. It uh -huh. was almost picked off, all Treadwell's fault. But again, what that told you was that was a clear indication that if you play Laquan Treadwell, Kirk Cousins is going to try to throw him the ball. So while I'm with you and that was a terrible play and that was a terrible decision by Cousins, the Vikings knew full well what the ramifications were going to be if Treadwell was playing, that Kirk Cousins was going to look for him. So I spread the guilt out here, too, because week two, after week two, you had to say to yourself, we, we can't, uh -uh, can't do this because that quarterback's going to look for who he's assigned to look for, and all hell could break loose. Two years in a row, the Vikings got fooled by training camps. Last year, Laquan Treadwell was really good in training camp, and they decided to cut Kendall Wright. And I'm not saying Kendall Wright was ever a fit or was good at all, but the guys that they decided to keep behind Laquan Treadwell were not very experienced. So they got rid of Tavares King, they got rid of Kendall Wright, and they had... Your Chad Beebe, I believe, made the practice squad initially. Brandon Zilstra made the team. It wasn't like there was any sort of contingency plan if Laquan Treadwell looked the same as he had the two years before, and they were left with just that, just Laquan Treadwell. And what are you going to play? Brandon Zilstra, who's never played in the NFL before, and I'm sure there's a reason why he didn't beat out Laquan Treadwell in training camp because he wasn't really all that impressive in camp anyway. But you would also put the blame on John Filippo here in terms of his errors from last year, of which there were many, uh, that might be one of the biggest ones. Continuing to roll out three wide receiver sets with Laquan Treadwell. And I was looking up Treadwell's um, snap counts last night, because why wouldn't you? And Because I was at the Twins game, actually. It's really stunning. Great game. Watching Jonathan watch. Sco go Babe Ruth. He hit that ball Martin Perez insanely far. Played the role of Sandy Koufax. Um, at least we could say this about football, that they don't rig the football. They do rig the rules, but they don't <laughs> yeah, rig the football. They rig, okay, they rig the rules. They That's don't true. rig the football, so it travels the faster. Uh, okay, never mind. I take it back. You're <laughs> yeah. not supposed Manny's to right. rig the football. So uh, look at these. Yeah, the, but these snap counts, <laughs> Yeah, some of them are crazy. Uh, when they played uh, Detroit. 83% of the snaps when they played the New York Jets, 73% of the snaps. This is for someone who I looked up just before the show mm -hmm. in terms of yards per catch out of 108 wide receivers who had at least 30 targets last year. Laquan Treadwell in yards per catch was 105th and he doesn't like run after the catch. It's isn't a playmaker. That's impressively bad. Yes, it is impressively bad. And yet the offensive coordinator was running him out there for 60% of snaps, 70% of snaps, 80% of snaps. And as soon as Kevin Stefanski took over, he was benched for a game, played 31 and 24% of snaps. 
which I think is about the most you can ever use Laquan Treadwell. But what's crazy to me, Judd, is that there's really no answer outside of Irv Smith for the Laquan Treadwell issue. You know what frustrates me about this? Because it's a common sense. Here's what, here's, I think, the most maddening thing to me about sports and sports teams and decisions that are made. If they could have come to you and asked you what to do, and you could have unequivocally, this is not second guessing, unequivocally at that moment told them, here's what you do, and they don't do it, it drives me crazy. And I got one name written down, and he didn't play a snap for, for the Vikings in 2018. In fact, he was nowhere near Egan or downtown during games. I know games. who you're going to say. That name's Jarius Wright. Yep. Jarius Wright was the, he was the cousins, I'm going to throw you the ball, and, and Jarius Wright was the, I'm not going to screw it up guy. He wasn't dynamic. He wasn't a Pro Bowl player, but you know what he did in 2017, right? When he was throwing the ball and we saw this and, and we used to talk about this in the press box and say for as little as that guy plays, which we both didn't get, if he's given a chance every time he doesn't do what? He doesn't screw up. Right. So he, so the, it's incredibly frustrating to me who didn't say to themselves, you know what? This guy's pretty doggone good at what we ask him to do. And when you talk about first guesses, I remember writing an article, the Vikings might miss Jarius Wright more than they think. They thought that they could cut him and then bring him back on a cheaper contract. And usually if you cut a player, Tom Johnson did this to Seattle last year. If you cut me, I'm going to go find somewhere else to play because that says that you don't care enough to keep me around. And Jarius last year with Carolina, 43 catches on 57 targets. So Cam Newton had a 75% completion percentage when throwing to Jarius Wright. And no surprise, he averaged more yards per catch than Laquan Treadwell by a pretty wide margin. And I, I think that's where the second guessing will still come in this year. And I, I was talking about this a little bit yesterday uh, in the afternoon about the excuses or no excuses for Kirk Cousins. If it doesn't work out, uh, is it entirely on him? And I still say that we could be in a situation where we're talking about how it wasn't all Kirk Cousins fault. I don't think the pass protection is that much better than it was last year right now. And if Irv Smith isn't great right away, he isn't that player who could play a bunch of different positions or whatever else or needs more development. Then who are you left with? I I've gotten tweets about Dylan Mitchell, Ola BC Johnson. Let let's see if they even make the roster. I mean, Dylan Mitchell, you go to his scouting report and it says the guy doesn't like to work at it. <laughs> okay. Well, well I'm I mean, not going to pencil him again, in as number does? three then. I know he had some decent stats at Oregon, but the same issues were with Stacey Coley when he came out of Miami. But, Treadwell, but, but let's just say, for the sake of this conversation right now, Matthew Collar, let's just say the system and scheme works well. And let's say it fits Cousins perfectly. And, and so he thrives as much as he possibly can, which is not going to be to be a great QB. But it can be a productive QB. Here's the issue with the Treadwell conversation and guys like Laquan Treadwell. He's not a good player. He's a negative player. I don't see any way you're going to turn him. If this scheme works perfectly, I don't see how he fits. He's not going to all of a sudden catch the ball. He can't run. You told me this in his rookie year, and, and I believe the head coach brought this up, and it, I think, remains true. Laquan works very hard at what he's already good at which some guys do, which for the life of me, I guess I get, but it's it seems weird. But Laquan works very hard at things that he can do. He doesn't work on things that he can't improve. And so how does a guy like that all of a sudden, unless there is a come to Jesus season of some sort that I don't see coming, how does a guy like Laquan Treadwell change? And my answer is he probably doesn't. He's a negative player. He doesn't change. And I think that they got fooled twice by him because he had really good training camps. And uh, the one training camp, he got dinged up a little bit, but for the most part had played really well. On the play that he got hurt in 2017 camp, it was making an amazing catch over Anton Exum. Remember him? Yeah. Uh, he made an incredible catch in the back of the end zone. And then last year, there wasn't anybody close to Laquan Treadwell, aside from Stefan Diggs and Adam Thielen. It was a big story that he and Kirk Cousins had this great chemistry, and it just tells you a lot about training camp practices and uh, what they teach us you know, about someone like Laquan Treadwell, who was a first-round talent. But when the games actually start, opening day against the San Francisco 49ers, yeah. at one point, Kyle Rudolph is throwing his arms in the air because Laquan Treadwell is running the wrong route. And at that moment, they should have 
been been aware that okay, no matter how good this guy does in training camp practices, this just isn't going to work. But there's two things that come to mind off that that I don't get, and that that Spielman is as culpable as anybody for, and it's this: you drafted, and this guy was a superior a superior athlete, Cordero Patterson though. Cordero Patterson was another guy that couldn't run routes. And listen, if a guy's three years in and he can't run routes, guess what? He ain't ever going to run routes well. He did, does, Some people, they either don't get it, don't care. The other thing is, how many training camps has Spielman been in charge for? And Matthew, we have sat there and talked about a training camp practice where a guy looks great. I remember Scoggins and I once changed a story in the Star Tribune because Chris Cook, a cornerback who ended <laughs> up being awful, had, I think, three picks in a training camp practice and looked great. I can't tell you the amount of players that I've seen have training camp practices where you say to yourself, Wow. Michael Floyd. But you know what happens? It takes about two of those. And then we, in our job, say, okay, that was great. It means nothing. Yeah. Like the first time you are, you, you're impressed. The second time you might be impressed. But by the third time. So how on earth do the Vikings get fooled by Treadwell? Now, if this was his second year, then I sort of get it. But when we're, you're talking deeper into his career, which I think last year was training camp three, right? It was. Okay. It means nothing. I think Zero. they believed that he did have some type of chemistry with Kirk Cousins. And that might be why Kirk Cousins kept throwing in his direction during the season. And I just pulled this up too. I, I feel like every time you get done talking, I want to have another great Laquan Treadwell stat. Pro football focus. I'm enjoying it quite frankly. Pro football so focus coming. grades. Yep. One to a hundred grades. There are, I want you to guess how many wide receivers last year received lower grades than Laquan Treadwell in the NFL out of 108. Oh, when Mackey does this, it's impressively close to 108. So I'm going to say five. <laughs> Two. James Washington from Pittsburgh and another bus, John Ross from Cincinnati. So he's Wiggy, basically. They, they, yep. They were the only lower graded wide receivers than Laquan Treadwell. Kelvin Benjamin, who's a laughing stock now, was graded slightly higher and actually averaged 15 yards a catch, even though he only had 23 catches. But that tells you how bad it really was last season and to throw to him 47 times is kind of nuts and it does it, it does point the finger at Kirk Cousins as well as Laquan Treadwell to throw it to him 47 times it does point the finger at John D. Filippo for dialing up plays that include Laquan Treadwell when he's like this I, I think the question that I come back to now though is we're solidified in this certainty that it did not work out and it's not going to work out. And I don't see a path, unlike with Cordero Patterson, where you could see a path where he could be a, an effective NFL player. I don't see a path here with Laquan Treadwell. So the question is, should we go back and look at the Vikings decision to draft him and say, how did you miss blank? Because I've read all of the reviews of that draft, as you have, you read some on your show yesterday. And I've looked over and over at different scouting reports. One of the guys I really love from Yahoo Sports, Matt Harmon, who studies wide receivers analytically, tracks every route that they run and their success rate. And he's done great work on Stefan Diggs man-to-man -man coverage and why he's so excellent. He did a write-up on Laquan Treadwell before that draft, talking about how effective the guy was yeah. and how that 4640 didn't mean a whole lot. And it and it hasn't meant a lot for some other and star I bought wide receivers. That. At the time, by the way, I did buy all that. But all the studies that everybody seemed to do on this guy was that he was a dominant wide receiver. 